This week's word of the week is going to be tungsten. This is a uh, material that's used in gas tungsten arc welding. It has the electrode. It's a little bit different in uh, other welding processes because it's not consumed. You add your filler uh, manually. The uh, tungsten puts down a super concentrated arc that melts the base metal as well as the filler metal, and that's what makes the weld. Um, I got written here, why W? What is W? W is the atomic symbol for tungsten. And everybody goes, why would it be W? Why would it be T or TU or TN? Um, it comes from a mineral called wolframite or wolfram. And that's why it's called W. Usually with periodic table of elements, if it has a, uh, a symbol that doesn't quite go along with the, uh, the word, that's usually why. It comes from something maybe from a different language or you know just a different mineral that uh, um, people don't know about. So that's why it's W, Wolfram. Um, why do we use um, tungsten for the electrode? Uh, there's a couple of uh, properties here. High tensile, uh, it's very hard. It's got a rock wall of C45. The tensile strength is 500,000 pounds per square inch. Uh, those are just kind of uh, fun facts. Down here is why we really use it. High melting temperature, high boiling temperature, and good electrical conductivity. I got the melting temperature written right here. Um, 6,170 degrees Fahrenheit, and the boiling temperature is 10,700 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's very um, high melting temperature. Uh, that's important because you have that super concentrated arc coming off of a tungsten that's usually 16th of an inch, 332nd of an inch, or 8th of an inch, depending on the, the material that you're welding with. So if it didn't have a high melting temperature, it would just go down into the weld, right? So that's one of the main reasons we use tungsten for TIG welding. Uh, another major reason down here, good electrical conductivity. If um, it didn't conduct electricity well, you'd have a lot of resistance. And again, um, your tungsten would go down into the weld. So a good electrical conductivity is a major um, uh, point that uh, is good for uh, tungsten. Over here, types. There's a number of different types of tungstens that um, can be used in welding. Usually they're alloyed with something uh, just a little bit, you know, 1% or 2%. Um, to uh, aid in electron emission or uh, keep the tungsten from getting uh, consumed. Uh, the first one here, um, these are all classifications for the AWS, these EW numbers, numbers, EW letters. Um, EWP just means electrode, W, that's Wolfram for tungsten, the atomic symbol, so it's W, and then P is for pure. So that's pure tungsten. Uh, there's a little color code on the end of each piece of tungsten. I'll show you that here at the end. At the end, I'm going to show you uh, the color code, and then there's um, three different ways to point the tungsten, depending on what you're welding. So I'm going to show you that too here at the end. But um, for now, these bands are at the end. There's a little um, color band that identifies the tungsten. So if you have a little drawer on top of your welder, and it's full of tungstens, these color bands will tell you what they are alloyed with or not alloyed with in this case, which was green, pure, it's for AC. So if you're welding aluminum, you're going to use pure tungsten. Uh, that's what you're going to use, pure tungsten. Or there's also down here, you can see EWZR-1, that's the classification for zirconium tungsten, and that's usually a quarter to a half percent zirconium added to the actual tungsten. Those are your two AC um, tungsten electrodes. The most common Right here, EWTH-2, that's going to be red, 2% thoriated. There's also EWTH-1, which is yellow, and that's 1% thoriated. Uh, so it has thorium in it. The problem with this is thorium is radioactive. So what does that mean? Probably not good to use, right? Um, I was at the AWS, and I asked somebody there, what is this? Uh, is, it, is it really actually radioactive? Is it hurting you if you're welding with thorium? And the person that was there said it's the equivalent of eating a banana if you weld all day with the potassium in a banana. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what they told me. Um, well, anyways, so people are afraid of the thoriated tungsten because it is radioactive. Why, why do they add thorium? Let's go back to that. They add the thorium to emit the electrons better. It also holds up better. So that's why they alloy the thorium. This is for direct current electrode negative welding. Um, because it is radioactive, they came up with this down here. The main or the most commonly used um, substitute for the thorium is going to be your orange right here, EWCE-2, 
which is 2% seriated. Or you can go EWLA-1, which is black, and that's 1% lanthanum. Now I circled these because these are the two that aren't radioactive and they're substitutes for your thoriated tungsten. I also wrote down here gold with a question mark because I saw some uh, stuff on the internet where they were uh, saying the color of lanthanated was gold. So I don't know, I've always been told it was black and I've got you know documents that always say it's black. But I put gold down here with a question mark. So if you see gold, apparently that's um, lanthanated tungsten. So hopefully that uh, gives you a good idea of the types of tungstens. They have new ones coming out now. They call it rare earth materials or something like that that claim that they do um, AC and DC, so you have one electrode, which is a benefit because then you don't have to, you know, keep track of all these different colors and designations. Um, I don't know how effective they are. We always use EW TH-2 red 2% thoriated on steel and stainless, and we always use pure on aluminum. It's just what we do. Um, we haven't had any problems with the thorium. Uh, if, you, if you're afraid of the thorium because of its radioactivity, you go get your uh, seriated 2% orange. All right, let's go over the uh, different points here, which I got behind this board. Get up here. End points. Steel and stainless, right here, you're going to be doing a point. 99.9% .9 of the time, it's going to be a point. Uh, so you just grind it uh, to a point, put a little flat spot. I should put a flat spot there. Just touch that off and put a flat spot here. Uh, you can see these lines right here. What that is, is your grinding marks, you always want your grinding marks going parallel with the tungsten. So you wouldn't want them to go, you know, up and down like this. Uh, you always want it parallel to the tungsten. Go down here, tape it with a ball. Uh, you can see your grinding marks again with a little bit of a ball. So you, you grind it to a point and then you ball it up so it can take more heat. And then down here, the ball, that's just a full blown ball. Uh, this is for doing uh, aluminum. Aluminum takes a lot of heat and your, your heat distribution goes to 50-50 because you're on alternating current. So it can't take the heat, so you have to put a ball on. This could also be for aluminum if you're doing thinner aluminum, depending on um, what you're welding, I guess. Uh, but usually when you're doing aluminum, you're gonna ball it up. The way you do that is you either hammer on it when you um, put it to the table on AC, but the better way to do it, in my opinion, is you just turn it to direct current electrode uh, positive and then that puts the electricity going from the table up into your tungsten and that will form a nice little ball right here and then you switch it back to AC. Don't forget to switch it back to AC or else you'll have a mess. So what we'll do now is we'll go out there and we'll, we'll make these three endpoints and then I'll also show you the color bands and I'll uh, wrap this baby up. Alright, here we are. This is just a 332nd diameter. Um, 2% thoriated tungsten. I stuck it in a drill there so you can see it. Let's see if we can get closer without it blurring. See, that's the color designation. Just a, it's like a little red band. That's all it is. On this one, we put a point. So we'll take a look at the point now and then we'll uh, go to some pure. Alright, this is the point end on that 332nd 2% uh, thoriated tungsten. Okay, grind job. It could be more even towards the base of that grinding, but we'll take a look at the tapered ball now. We did a tapered ball on this one. This is eighth inch pure tungsten, something we typically use for aluminum. So let's take a look at the tapered ball, and then we'll show you the ball. This is your tapered with a ball, and you can see it comes down to a little bit of a point, and then it's balled up on the end. So you can do a little bit of thinner aluminum with that. Let's check out the ball. Last but not least, this is 8th inch pure tungsten with a ball on the end. That might be a little bit bigger than you want. You don't want the ball to be actually bigger than the actual width of the uh, tungsten. That's a little bit bigger now that I'm looking at it on the screen here. But hopefully that clears up the different types of tungstens, the end shapes, things like that. Definitely need to know a lot about tungsten if you're in the welding world. So uh, thanks for watching and subscribing to TV Weld. and. We'll be back next week, hopefully.